The interview with BJNN is brought to you by Biz Events, connecting the Central New York business community through events. I'm Marnie Nasher, president of the Business Journal News Network, and I'd like to welcome Dave Schneckenberger, president of Thompson and Johnson Equipment Company, a provider of new and used forklift and material handling equipment solutions located right here in East Syracuse. Welcome, Dave. Marnie, thank you very much. Glad to be here. Yeah. Glad to have you. We always like to get to know the presidents and C-suite executives of our community. So if you would share a little bit about yourself, where did you grow up? I grew up in Oswego. Um, I uh, had a good life up there. Um, did well in school, did well in athletics, had a good time um, enjoying the outdoors, water skiing, hunting, fishing, snowmobiling. So it was a, a good place to, to grow up. And then how, uh, where did you study? Where was your undergrad degree from? Went to college in Westminster College in Western Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, What'd you major in? Majored in math and business. I started as a math major because I liked it, and then realized that wouldn't be a great career choice for me. So I picked up a double major in business, and then uh, graduation took a BS degree in math because BS sounded better. <laughs> and uh, I went to work in the steel industry, um, worked in Youngstown, Chicago, and St. Louis. I was, wow. did that for five years. All right, so you've been in manufacturing for a while then. How did you get into Thompson Johnson? I married well. <laughs> okay. uh, so one of my good friends in college, um, uh, we started talking after we were both out of school. And I was in St. Louis, she was teaching in Vermont, and things just worked out. So uh, we ended up getting married. And her father started Thompson & Johnson. He's the Johnson of Thompson & Johnson. Okay. So after a couple years of marriage, George and I talked and I decided to come back here and go to work, which be get back to the family, which is great. And uh, came back here in 1981, went from a salary job to a commission job and basically hit a recession. So it was a Fun time to make the change. And what were you doing? Did you, I mean, you didn't start off as president. Oh, no. I, I, so I left sales in the steel industry, came back here as a sales representative. Okay. So then worked my way up through sales, sales management, vice president, president. Great. So, great experience yeah. to be president after it's all fun. that. Well, it's, it's fun. People are great. People are great. Yeah. And today, when you need business advice, who would be a mentor for you? Who would you seek out? I have probably three places I go for advice. Um, I have an outside board of directors, and on the board is a local attorney, a local um, uh, businessman, and uh, another, um, another another businessman, actually. So um, three local businessmen or two local businessmen and an attorney. Um, I have a, an accountant that joins us occasionally. So they're the, the structured, if you will, um, advisors, trusted advisors. Then I'm in a couple industry roundtables, and that's great for, again, in our industry and thinking about how we do things better. Um, and then finally, I have a local executive, uh, executive coach that I work with. Oh, nice. So I've got a you know, hodgepodge of people that uh, I trust that I go to. Well, very important. That's great. So tell the readers about Thompson & Johnson. How did it begin? So Thompson & Johnson began in 1954. Uh, George Johnson and Tommy Thompson started it. Uh, they were Clark Forklift salesmen at that time. That was an era when the manufacturers were setting up dealerships to provide local parts and service. And they got the Syracuse territory, grew the business, um, 1969 added Bobcat compact construction equipment. Um, Tommy retired in 71. I came on in 81. 1994, we took on Toyota forklift trucks, who at that point were seventh or eighth in the industry. Now they're number one in the industry. 2000, we got to take on Crown forklift trucks. They're now number two in the industry, which is great. Just keeping both of them happy is always a challenge. Um, so we had a chance to grow the business. We have facilities in Binghamton, Elmira, and Albany. Oh, that was one of my questions in terms of the coverage. Yeah, so our, our territory, if you look at a map of New York State, we go from Corning to Geneva to Plattsburgh to Poughkeepsie. Okay. And then basically every county in Vermont, Mass, and PA that touches that territory. Wow. So it's kind of a goofy territory. but Sounds like a lot of territory, though. It's a lot of geography for a small market. It right. is. 
It is. And how many employees do you? We have 160 employees. Uh, we had pretty good growth for it this year. We've added, we've added um, 10 or 12 employees this year. Uh, we're up to 80 technicians. Uh, service is the backbone of our business. Nice. Um, what types of companies tend to be your customers? Anybody that moves something on a pallet or on the Bobcat side, um, farmers, landscapers, construction business. So on the forklift side, anywhere from the regional market um, to food and beverage, someone like a Chobani, um, for example, is a great customer. Um, manufacturing could be Lockheed, Borg Warner, Novellus. Um, so it's, it's the whole range of, of manufacturing and distribution. And are you seeing growth in any of those customer segments? Most of the growth is in distribution. In distribution. Um, you yeah, know, manufacturing, we're still struggling. Okay. Uh, we lost a lot of jobs, as everyone knows, over the last 10, 15 years. And it's stabilized, but it'll never come back to be what it was, I don't think. So the growth is in distribution, food and beverage. You know, we, we all like to eat and drink no matter what the economy is doing. True. So that, that business keeps rolling. Um, and we've been fortunate to... Um, work with some national accounts, so we support um, distribution centers for Walmart, Target, Best Buy, so some, name a few. What is your company's biggest challenge, and what are you doing about it? Our biggest challenge is probably everybody's biggest challenge, and that's hiring okay. quality people, right. yeah. and especially technicians, because kids aren't going to the trades today. So we have learned, finally, that we hire for culture fit, not for technical ability. So if someone, if we can hire someone that has the aptitude, say for being a technician, um, but they fit our culture, we'll invest heavily in them to develop them. So you're doing your own training? We are, we have a, we have a full-time technical trainer yeah. and we have a training program that I'd say is pretty rigorous. Um, it's anywhere from three to six months long. Uh, we'll, we will bring in a, an apprentice level technician and that would be the six month program. And for any of them, the first month is all non-billable time. It's just they're in training, whether it's technical training, it's about Thompson and Johnson, it's our workflows, but we're really working hard to set up um, these new technicians for success. How long have you been doing this for? Actually, we, this program we just started in April. Okay. So we're in our um, fourth round of it. Um, we also learned that starting Technicians on a um, on a non non standard basis was difficult for training. So every new tech now starts on the first Monday of the month, so we can schedule out that time properly for training. And uh, so far, the reviews have been great. That's great. We'll have to bring you back and find out if it's been if, if that's solving your problem yep. in a couple of years. Well, it'll solve it if retention keeps. At this point, our retention on. Um, we also do a, re a referral basis where employees can refer um, uh, technicians and they get a cash reward and there's a sign on bonus for that technician. Um, that retention rate's running over 80%, wow. pushing 90. So it's, it's, it's working really well, yeah. Okay. Very interesting. Um, are there any technological innovations that are being adopted by you that you see as an opportunity? So in both sides of the business, both the forklift side and the Bobcat compact construction equipment side, um, telematics is becoming more and more important. And telematics is basically communication built into the piece of equipment. So it can be used for compliance, meaning that um, if you're only trained to work on a certain, to operate a certain piece of equipment and you scan your badge, if you're not trained on that one, it won't start up. So it's good for compliance. It's good for damage control. They will, uh, trucks will report um, impacts running into building columns. Not a good thing. Um, they're good for the, uh, a lot of productivity analysis comes, comes out of them. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an exciting time for that. Um, and we have customers with probably as few as four forklift trucks up to full fleets that use it. Um, on the Bobcat side, it's a standard piece of e equipment on the Bobcat product, so it's uh, it's exciting. Let's let's shift gears, and I want to talk about community a little bit. You're involved sure. with some boards, and curious as to what are some of the boards you're involved with, and why do you serve on the boards? Well, I serve on boards because I think it's important to give back to our community. Uh, it, it's 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 a bit altruistic, but I, I think that's that's the real reason. 
Um, I'm past president of DeWitt Rotary, um, past president of DeWitt Community Church Board, and I'm still on that, I'm back on that board. Um, I was president of the most here on the circle mm -hmm. and continue on that board. And currently I'm serving as secretary on the exec committee for center state CEO. So good mix of right. A lot of organizations. Different. Yeah. Great. And does everything that you serve on, I know you said altruism, but is it is there something specific that you served on the board for the most um, versus center state? They're so different. Um, center state, I fully, I really believe in center state because they're the one group locally that are our economic development okay. um, group and rising tide raises all ships. So the more successful they are at either retaining or attracting new business, the, all of us. Yeah, the, the more chances we have at bat, the more swings we get. Um, church is important to me, it always has been, so serving there is, is a great way to get back. Um, early on when I got back here, Spence Wallace, who used to be general manager at Hotel Syracuse, got me involved with the Discovery Center, which became the most. Right. Um, and I just think that's they have a great mission. Um, and do a community, or, um, do it Rotary, again, it's, it's all, that's all about giving back to your community. So it all fits together. Wonderful. And you, your company is also one of our best places to work again this year. So all right, thank congratulations you. Congratulations on that. We're excited. Yeah. And as we head into 2020 at this point, what, what do you see on the horizon for our central New York community? I think our biggest growth opportunity now is the unmanned aerial systems, the drone mm -hmm. business. Um, that is really exciting for this area. It has the opportunity for some really good, high-paying te technology jobs, probably some high-tech manufacturing. So that probably is the, the the brightest star that's shining right now for that. Um, my biggest concern are our lack of low-skill entry jobs. You know, we, we, we were working for an inland port that would have provided upwards of 2,000 low-skill entry jobs, and that didn't pan out. But that's what, you know, this area desperately needs those type of jobs. So we we got to find a way to you know help support um, that group of people, but overall you know CNY is a great place to, to live and work and grow grow a family so raise a family. Can agree more. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Yeah, enjoyed it. Yeah, well, and please stay up to date. Join us. Look at our website cnybj.com for more updates. We hope to see you soon. Thank you.